Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down the Minnesota Timberwolves trade involving Rudy Gobert and, you know, discuss the trade on both sides of the spectrum. Talk about the Utah Jazz from their dynamic and the Minnesota Timberwolves overall, how Rudy Gobert is going to fit within, you know, the dynamic of Minnesota's team and what they can potentially look like come this postseason and how teams are going to scheme for them and things of that nature. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, turn on post notification on YouTube, make sure to also download our episodes share them with your friends give us a five star rating and a nice review on all podcast streaming platforms but without further ado let's kick start season three of the ball fake podcast with this rudy gobert trade that definitely was a shocker because the amount of assets that the minnesota timberwolves had to give up in order to obtain rudy gobert at first seemed really shocking to me right you know to give up four first round picks on top of some pretty quality and intricate pieces to you know this team originally especially last postseason giving up malik beasley you know a guy who's a three and d asset can really space the floor for you and you know one of your better point of attack defenders for you last season on top of giving up patrick beverly someone who was transcendent when it came to you know changing the overall tradition and culture of the minnesota timberwolves brand and then seeing jared vanderbilt a guy who was getting compared to guys like dennis rodman you know one of the all-time greats because of his defensive fortitude it definitely was a little bit alarming when you first viewed the trade initially for the Timberwolves side right now if you're a Utah Jazz fan getting off Rudy Gobert's contract understandably knowing that you know the ceiling with him and Donovan Mitchell that era it's ran its course right we understood those two more than likely need to be split it up because you know with the western conference continuously improving utah it seemed like they were staying stagnant and they weren't really seeing much you know improvement overall as you know they started to fall in the standings in the last couple of seasons and you know they weren't having much success in a postseason year after year that being said i want to talk about the timberwolves side of this trade right because last postseason there was glaring issues for me right obviously number one carl anthony town's lack of defensive fortitude defending pick and roll defending anything perimeter wise and being able to play situational basketball was something that was extremely alarming for the Timberwolves to say the least and you know had he been able to do and clean up some of those things not be as inefficient in some of those areas maybe the Timberwolves make it to the second round and they surpass the Memphis Grizzlies surprisingly a team who you know widely overachieved last season gaining a number two seed and being able to match up with the Timberwolves in this first round of the NBA postseason and the second issue was the lack of a true orchestrator within this offense right now we understand D'Angelo Russell can be an all-star caliber guard right somebody who can initiate your offense has the capabilities of giving you you know 20 plus points per game on any given night while being able to dish the basketball out at a pretty decent if not elite level but The inconsistencies with D'Angelo Russell, especially given his contract, I was really surprised to see that for Minnesota to give up so many assets, you ideally would have thought that D'Angelo Russell might have been a piece that would have, you know, uh, been dealt in a trade to get, you know, a player of Rudy Gobert's caliber, especially given his contract. You know, this is a guy that's going to be penciled in for, you know, over $200 million, and you're sitting him right next to Carl Anthony Towns, and this front court is the most expensive front court in the NBA now, you know, with Carl Anthony Anthony Towns making around $224 million over the next couple of seasons. You know, Rudy Gobert making subpar $40 million a year. What's really astonishing to me about this trade is the fact that Minnesota went all in on a position that is not valued very highly in the NBA, and that being the center position. You're seeing firsthand with the Phoenix Suns, you know, willing to let DeAndre Ayton walk because they feel like there's a lot of guys that are just as valuable as DeAndre Ayton, but for far less money, to see Minnesota go all in on the center position was a little bit surprising to say the least, right? And another thing that I also want to talk about too is like, we've been hearing rumors about the Indiana Pacers wanting to get rid of guys like Miles Turner. You probably could have got Miles Turner on a much lesser deal 
you probably wouldn't have had to give up as many assets in order to you know obtain a guy like miles turner who probably isn't going to be as impactful defensively because rudy gobert is a generational talent from that perspective but all in all i don't think that you know carl anthony towns necessarily needs someone of rudy gobert's magnitude to necessarily you know put this team within contention now that being said given you now have rudy gobert and carl anthony towns they could create some matchup advantages for the both of them because you know carl anthony towns Towns, given he was playing the center position he was able to take bigs away from the basket allowing minnesota to have a lot more spacing this is a team that you know is filled with a ton of athletic guys like Jaden mcdaniels anthony edwards there was going to be a lot of opportunities for those guys to have backdoor cuts towards the rim just a lot of penetration having the basket wide open for those guys to be able to tear the rim down but you know given rudy gobert's on the team now that might not be available as often as it was in previous years now that being said the individual duo with Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert I still believe it can cause some problems offensively for other teams despite Rudy Gobert not being you know much of a offensive minded player who has a lot to offer from that perspective they're already going to have a height advantage and then quite frankly given now that Carl Anthony Towns is going to have more than likely smaller defenders on him whether it be a wing or undersized power forward on him that is going to make Carl Anthony Towns job a little bit easier now what I am afraid of is you know him now having to play too much perimeter based basketball i would like to see carl anthony towns stay grounded being an inside presence because ideally that is what he's best at despite him being able to step out shoot the long ball at you know an all-time level for someone of his size and position you know that could be a little bit of a problem but you know i think it, with the right point guard in place you know if d'angelo russell is still a member of this team i think you know there can be some situations where he could you know benefit having both of these twin towers in your offense due to the fact that you know in pick and roll scenarios you know i think rudy gobert is going to be a tremendous lob threat in the half court area especially when you have other guys that you have to obtain to defensively in anthony edwards car anthony towns d'angelo russell is 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 a threat within his own right and whoever else is filling in at that small forward position whether it be Jaden mcdaniels or torian prince so that could open up some opportunities for you know minnesota to get a little bit better from an offensive perspective now defensively there is going to be a few questions that come to mind does minnesota have the defensive fortitude to be able to you know annihilate teams when they go small against them from a defensive perspective because we understand and Utah Rudy Gobert sh struggled against small ball lineups not because he's a bad defender or a bad perimeter defender or anything of that nature but because he didn't have you know any supporting perimeter threats any point of attack defenders out on the perimeter and this is a guy that was had the responsibility of having to play help side defense and then have to close out the corners and just overall carry one of the worst defenses to a top five top ten defense in the entire NBA now when you come to Minnesota ideally that won't be as big of a problem but evidently Evidently, teams more than likely still can roll out a five out offense now the frequency of that happening is going to be a lot less just because teams are not going to be able to defend those guys in the half court setting because of the size and the number of options that minnesota is going to have on the offensive side of the basketball so the small ball lineups for the opposing teams minnesota might not have to worry about that as much but with that being said i want to talk about the utah jazz side of the trade they obviously got back a ton of quality players in malik Beasley. Jared Vanderbilt, Patrick Beverly as well, and Walker Kessler. And we talked about the four first round picks. Now, there have been reports about the Utah Jazz wanting to still build around Donovan Mitchell. I think that's very unlikely. You know, Danny Ainge is a guy that coming into this situation, I expected him to have to break up this group at some point. And I think given the pieces that they have now, although, you know, Vanderbilt, Beasley, and Beverly are some good quality defenders, right? You know, offensively, your offense is going to take a drastic hit because I don't think that these guys have, you know, the personnel to really compete from that perspective, right? And defensively, there's still going to be some questions despite some of those assets that you brought in. And as of right now, from what I can remember, Walker Kessler is the only center on this team as of right now. So, you know, I think ideally it would be in Utah's best interest to just go into a, a rebuild similar to the Indiana Pacers with you trading in some of your quality all-star level players in Rudy Gobert and then Donovan Mitchell likely being on the move. It's in this team's best interest to you know just tear down this entire operation and you know look into 
trying to build for the future because you know the likelihood of these guys having a higher seed next season even with donovan mitchell on the roster they might be a playoff team but you know what are the benefits in that you know you're just taking a continuous step back so ideally i would look for you know danny Ainge to tear down this entire operation there could be a three or four team trade involving donovan mitchell possibly but we will just have to wait and see for all of that stuff but you know outside of that i like to trade for both sides once again it was a little bit questionable about the amount of assets that minnesota had to give up in order to get rudy gobert but you know all in all i like to trade for both sides and i think evidently you know the the minnesota timberwolves they're going to be a team that you know more than likely is going to peak at the second round next year but with that being said thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening on apple podcast or spotify or any other podcast streaming platform make sure to like comment and subscribe turn on post notification give us a five star rating and a nice year review on all podcast streaming platforms but besides that it's your boy nicey chunga benny you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god